Hi, my name is Dr. David Bruss and I've been a practicing exotic veterinarian for the last 25 years. I'm the author of Sugar Gliders, a complete veterinary care guide, and I'm also president of the Association of Sugar Glider Veterinarians. The purpose of this video series is to cut through all the internet misinformation out there and teach owners like you the best veterinary approved ways to raise and care for sugar gliders. Now, just to make sure we're all on the same page here, sugar gliders are also commonly known as sugar bears and also as honey gliders. With that in mind, the goal of this video is to show you some effective ways to handle these little guys. This is Tinkerbell and most of the time I have either her or one of my other pet gliders along with me on my body all day long. Generally speaking, once you've bonded with your sugar glider, you can basically pick them up and play with them anytime you want without worrying about them jumping off. However, in the early stages of bonding, they don't know you from a table or door, so they will almost always jump off you if they can. Now, in an earlier video, we showed you the best way to pick up your baby and get them into your hands or a bonding pouch. Now it's time to learn a few different techniques for handling these little guys. First, once you have them either in your hands, either in a nesting cloth or a bonding pouch, just roll them into your other hands as we showed you in the earlier videos. Here, okay, there we go. Okay, like this. Okay, cup them in your hands gently until the baby stops crying. The important thing here is to understand that since sugar gliders are marsupials and their mom has a pouch, their whole idea of safety is a tight, dark place. Therefore, when you hold them like this between your hands, they feel very safe and secure. Now, having said that, the biggest mistake new parents mis make when they're doing this technique is they hold the baby too loosely because they're afraid of crushing it. When they cup their hands like this, allowing the baby to move around, it actually makes it less secure and stresses out. Always remember, baby gliders feel the most safe and secure when they are held firmly. So if you have the baby in your hands like this and it's making its crying sound, just gently squeeze down more firmly on it and it will almost always calm down. Sometimes this may take a minute or two, but if you hold them firmly enough, long enough, they will almost always settle down. Now, for the first day or two of bonding, just holding them like this and wearing them around your neck in a bonding pouch is really all you need to do. When it comes to bonding, it's always best to take your time and go slowly. At this stage, what you typically find is a few minutes after calming down, they'll usually end up just going to sleep right in your hands. This is exactly what you want, and once they've fallen asleep, you can even give them a little massage with your thumb like this, and they'll love it. Once you've gotten them to the point where they're falling asleep in your cupped hands pretty regularly, the next step is to start letting them move around between your hands. To do that, start by kind of feeling where their head is in your hands and moving them around so you can slide one thumb underneath their chin. Then pick them up by holding their body firmly and keep your index finger on top of their head. By putting your thumb underneath the chin like this, and keeping your index finger on top of their head like this, you'll be able to keep good control of their head and the rest of your hand can then hold their body securely. So, this also helps, keep, helps them feel safe and secure and they won't easily scoot out one way or the other. Now, this technique will probably take a few days of practice to get used to, but once you have it down, it is a very good way to handle a sugar glider of any age. In fact, this is the same technique I use in my practice to handle fully grown adult gliders that have hardly ever been held by human hands and it works. Okay, again, once you've got the baby held securely in one hand, your goal should be to let it get familiar with you by taking your other hand and massaging it. Again, don't be discouraged at first if the baby puts up a fuss like this one. When you do this, because remember their natural instinct is to try and protect itself by intimidating anything around it. You just have to be firm and show the little guy who's boss. Like I said earlier, once you started massaging it like this, don't be surprised if they start to get drowsy and go to sleep just after a few minutes. 
This is exactly what you want to happen because when the, they fall asleep in your hand, it's a clear sign they're beginning to trust you. You're okay. Now, once you have them in one hand and they've calmed down a little bit, it's time to slowly let them start moving around in your hands. You do this by making a little tunnel with your other hand like this and let the animal slowly crawl forward by removing your index finger and letting them slide through. Now again, you probably have to practice this technique a few times because when they aren't bonded to you yet, they will almost try anything to get out of your hands. It just takes a little time and consistent practice, but the idea here is to let the baby go from one hand to the other so it looks like this. Now, when you start doing this, you'll probably find they usually sit still for a couple of seconds and then shoot forward or backwards all of a sudden. This is natural because at this point, they're still in the very early stages of bonding with your baby. Just alternate between a minute or two of walking and then hold them in one hand and massage them a little while. Go back and forth between walking and massaging and doing these sessions a few times every day and pretty soon the baby will start to get used to you. One last thing about this technique. Sugar gliders are a lot like us humans in that when they wake up from a long nap, one of the first things they want to do is go to the bathroom. Therefore, in the early stages of doing this technique, don't be surprised if you get a little poop or pee on you. We'll show you the best way to potty train your sugar gliders and minimize these accidents like this in another video.